Kamu sa internet, this is a PSU, this is a PSU, this is a PSU, this is a PSU. We all know it, siya yung nagbibigay ng power sa computer natin, but don't let its simple looks fool you. They're one of the most misunderstood parts of a computer. Nakakalito sila. So for this video, we're gonna be cutting through the myths, the common misunderstandings surrounding this very ordinary looking black box, which is super important to any build. Sawa ka na ba sa unactivated windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation codes. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang ang order. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, may cdk ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found the love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com The stated power on the PSU is not how much power it gets from the outlet. First, this number isn't what you think it means. You see 750 watts printed on the box, and it's natural to assume that means it's a 750 watt PSU, which means it draws a max of 750 watts from the outlet. Nope. The posted number is the max wattage the PSU can deliver to the system. So a 750 watt PSU can deliver a total of 750 watts to the computer it's installed in. But nothing is 100% efficient, so to deliver 750 watts to the computer, the PSU has to draw more than 750 watts from the outlet. Some of the energy from the outlet to the PSU is lost as heat. If the PSU needs 750 watts, it's drawing something like 850 watts or more from your outlet. In practical terms, that means if you're using a 750 watt PSU at 100% load, then you're paying for more than just 750 watts of power. The number on the box is not an absolute limit to the amount of power that the PSU can be costing you. Buying a more efficient PSU is worth it for cost savings. Kung gusto mo magtipid, sinasabi mo sa sarili mo, I'll just buy a more efficient PSU. Sa simula, it will be more expensive, but in the long term, it will save you money. Efficiency is something that people think a lot about for PSUs, and there is a generally recognized rating system for this, 80+. I've talked about 80+, before in my other videos, so I won't do a deep dive here. The important bit is that 80+, is a recognized PSU efficiency rating system, and that there are levels signified by different colors. The lowest rating is simply 80 plus, or sometimes known as 80 plus white, since that's the color of the symbol. The highest rating is 80 plus titanium. Let's do a deep dive of the numbers to see if buying a more efficient PSU really saves you money in the long term. We'll use two different Seasonic models as an example. Seasonic is a recognized PSU brand and generally has a good reputation. We'll have two PSUs of the same rated capacity, 850 watts, but different 80 plus ratings. First, we have the B12 BM850, 850 watts, 80 plus bronze, SM, which goes for around 5,150 pesos or around $92. Second, we have the Prime Ultra 850, 80 plus titanium. Again, that's the highest 80 plus level. 850 watts, 80 plus FM, which goes for around 12,600 pesos or $226. 80 plus bronze level means that at 100% load, a PSU is 82% efficient, which means to provide 850 watts, it consumes 1,036 watts per hour. So if you run the B12 for 10 hours at 100% load, you'll be using around 10,360 watts per hour or 10.36 kilowatts per hour. The Meralco rate, my energy distributor is here in Metro Manila, for April 2025, was around 13 pesos per kilowatt hour. Which means to run the BM850 for 10 hours at 100% load would cost me around 135 pesos. Yung PSU pa lang yun, wala pa yung ibang appliances na naka-on during that time. Just your PSU. I know this is basic math, pero to be honest, medyo nahihilo na ako. With all the multiplication, the conversions, 
it's not easy to intuitively figure out if this is something that can save you money. So let's do that same computation for the Prime Ultra. It's 80 plus titanium, so it is 90% efficient at 100% load. A big jump from the 82% efficiency of the 80 plus bronze B12. Doing the math shows us that the Prime Ultra consumes around 944 watts per hour when it is at 100% load. So if you run the Prime Ultra for 10 hours at 100% load, you're only using around 9,440 watts of power or 9.44 kilowatts, which would cost me around 123 pesos. If you bought the Prime Ultra over the B12, you are saving yourself 12 pesos for every 10 hours that you are running it at 100% load. All of this makes sense so far. The numbers for the Prime Ultra are lower because it is a more efficient PSU. What's not lower for the Prime Ultra is its price tag. There's a 7,500 peso difference between the B12 and the Prime Ultra. How long do you need to run the Prime Ultra to make back its more expensive price tag? Based on the math, we know that we save 12 pesos every 10 hours. So we just divide the price difference, how much we paid for the Prime Ultra. So yun nga, 7,500, that's the price over the B12. We divide that by 12 and then multiply by 10 since we need to run it 10 hours to save 12 pesos. Doing all of the math, you need to run the Prime Ultra for 6,250 hours. That's around 260 days to make back the upfront cost versus the much cheaper B12. And that's 260 days of pure uptime, of pure production. That's not 260 days at 10 hours per day. That is 260 days, 24 hours. Or if you like, in hours, 24 times 260, that's how much you need to run the Prime Ultra for to make up for the price difference para lang even na siya dun sa cheaper price of the B12. You haven't even started saving really yet. That's just making up the upfront cost. No problem, you say, less than a year, kain kaya yan. But remember, everything above is based on the assumption that you'll be at 100% load for the entire 10 hours is very rare, even for miners, even for rendering. Regardless of your work setup, it's very hard to find something that would be running the PSU at 100% load for 10 hours straight. So for normal users, even very heavy users who are not at 100% load, you need to use the PC for longer periods of time to realize the savings you're hoping for by buying a more expensive PSU. PSUs, regardless of the rating, are actually more efficient when they're delivering only 50% of the rated load. So if your usage case fits you more into that range, that's a factor as well in determining how many hours you need your PC to be running to realize the savings on a more expensive PSU. All of the math aside, that's sort of my way of saying that I don't think that very expensive PSUs just for the energy efficiency to save money in the long run is cost efficient. Personally, I buy an 80 plus gold and then that's fine for me for the next 10 years or something. Third myth, more efficient means more durable, longer lasting, more reliable. 80 plus only measures power efficiency, not durability. So technically, a higher 80 plus rating does not mean that the PSU will generally last longer than lower rated PSUs. So an 80 plus titanium will not necessarily last longer or have a longer lifespan than a lowly 80 plus white or 80 plus bronze PSU. 80 plus simply doesn't measure lifespan. It's as consumers who just automatically assume that A, a higher rating must mean it's more durable, and B, the more expensive a PSU, then siguro naman the longer it will last. That said, there is additional engineering which goes into attaining higher efficiencies and perhaps the additional components, PSU architecture, might make higher rated PSUs last longer. But it's not a guarantee, and 80 plus certainly doesn't measure lifespan. So it's at the most a very rough stand in for lifespan. Very roughly, you could probably say that an 80 plus platinum will last longer than an 80 plus white, but it's just that it's an assumption, it's not a certainty. The old joke about cheap PSUs is that when you use one in your system, you're installing a bomb which sooner or later will fail, taking out the other components in your system as well. These cheap PSUs usually come bundled with cheap cases and are referred to as generic. The brands are unknown and usually don't have any certifications. But generic PSUs aren't automatically bad. Just use them for systems that don't need a lot of power like office setups. 
Generic PSUs are fine and will last a long time if all your PC is doing is spreadsheets, surfing, documents, things along those lines. Sure, generic PSUs aren't for performance gaming builds, editing rigs, servers, etc. But they're not meant to be. If you want to stick with the bomb analogy, then using a generic PSU in an appropriate build, like an office build, means that you've never lit the bomb in the first place, so walang sasabog. It is perfectly fine in low power consuming systems. PSUs deal with a lot of power and a bunch of engineering and components go into them, but consumers, especially in the Philippines, think of them as fragile things which need protecting. They need an additional shield, and this is why we protect them with AVRs. But the PSU as a damsel in distress is a myth. A PSU is more than capable of taking care of itself. Any reputable PSU already has a bunch of protections built into them, like over and under voltage protection, over current protection, over power protection, over temperature protection, short circuit protection. These are not extra add-ons. All of them are already in the PSU. In short, a PSU from a reputable brand doesn't need an AVR since it already has its own protections. An AVR is just an additional cost which most of the time you don't need. I've run my own personal rig, so it's for performance, for gaming, and for editing, plugged straight into the wall without an AVR for years, and I haven't had any problems. Also, the rare event which would fry your PSU would most likely fry your AVR as well. We had a customer a few years ago whose house was near a lightning strike. She was using a UPS with surge protection. So basically, that's what you want the AVR for. You're protecting yourself against spikes in the voltage. But that UPS with surge protection did not help. The lightning strike fried the UPS, the PSU, and the motherboard. And the protection of the PSU is not something that is whittled down over time. It's sort of like connected dun sa myth na to is that the more power fluctuations that your PSU deals with, the less and less na babawasan yung protection niya. But that's not the case. The better way to think about it is like a fuse. If the fuse holds up, then the fuse is fine. When the fuse goes down, then that's when you have no protection at all. The protection of a PSU are not like a suit of armor that gets dented, reduced over time as it deals with different issues with your power source. If your PSU is still working, then it is still at 100% defense strength. Hindi siya nababawasan. Bonus myth! I know I said five, but we're gonna give you one more. Fully modular PSUs are those where all the wires which will lead to your PC can be disconnected from the PSU unit. This is a good thing since you only need to plug in wires you need, making cable management easier and leading to a generally neater build. Since all the cables look the same, it's tempting to think you can mix and match the cables. For example, like the cables from a fully modular Seasonic PSU can be used with a fully modular Corsair PSU. That is not the case. Don't ever mix and match cables. They are not compatible. Don't even mix and match cables from different PSU models of the same brand. Use the cables which came with your PSU, and if you must use other cables, like you're getting third-party colored cables, make sure they are compatible with your specific PSU. Hope this video has demystified some confusing things about PSUs, and also perhaps saved you a bit of money since now you don't need to worry about too much buying super efficient PSUs, 80 plus titanium, or even getting yourself an AVR. Thanks for watching.